Um, item number one is calling to order, which I just did, and item number two is Pledge of Allegiance. Where's if you would allegiance? stand up and where's the flag? Right here. <laughs> you gave me the thumbs up, so <laughs> I went with it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And item number three is roll call. Councilor Baybine? Present. Councilor Caterina? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Blaze? Here. Councilor Chair Holbrook? I am here, and Councilor Hayes and Councilor Donovan are luckily on vacation and unable to uh, join us this evening. So item number four is general public comments. Is there anybody from the audience who wishes to speak? And if so, please come to the podium, name and address, and you have three minutes. Mike Turek, 11 Bayberry Lane. Scarborough Public Works did a superior job clearing the town roads in the past few weeks. The storms have been severe and closely spaced. The Public Works Department has kept pace. This could only be done with a huge team effort. Not one single person is responsible. I hope that someone has made a note for inclusion in the next round of performance reviews. This is a job well done. Thank you. And does anybody else wish to speak? All right. Well, seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close with the general public comment. And so item number five is the minutes of the February 4th, 2015 regular meeting. Is there a motion? Move approval. A second. And any errors, omissions, or discussions? None. Seeing none, all those in favor? And it's unanimous. There are item number six, adjustments to the agenda. There are none. Item number seven is treasurer warrants, which I will sign through the meeting. Item number eight is non-action items, which we have none. And that brings us right up to order number 15-012 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and action on a new request for a liquor license from the Columbia Wegman Scarborough LLC doing business as Belvida of Scarborough located at 18 Black Point Road. And this is a public hearing. Is there anybody who wishes to speak on this item? And seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and pleasure of the council. Move approval. Second. And discussion. Is it normal that uh, assisted living homes have liquor licenses? Um, if they serve alcohol, yes. I, I think they serve alcohol to their guests. I'm not aware it's for public uh, consumption. That's not the right way Sorry, to say it. Fine. I, think, I think it's for provision of for the good service to the residents and guests. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, that's great. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, and, and, and I want to go with that one. <laughs> yeah. and, they have, and they don't have to Mental pay tax on that anymore either. <laughs> right, 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 right. I'm just going to write that down now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> all right, all, all those in favor, and that's unanimous. Moving on to resolution 15-001 is resolve urging the main state legislature to craft a biannual state budget that prevents an, a significant increase in property taxes. And um, before I, um, we're going to ask Jean Marie to read the resolution. Um, but before we do so, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this? And seeing none, go ahead, Jean Marie. Resolution 15-001, urging the Maine State Legislature to craft a biennial state budget that prevents a significant increase in property taxes. Be it resolved by the Town Council of the Town of Scarborough, Maine, and Town Council Assembled, that whereas the Governor's unprecedented biennial budget proposal places municipalities in an untenable and uncertain fiscal position during their budget planning and threatens to significantly increase property tax burden and whereas the proposed biennial budget includes revisions to the tax code, some elements of which benefit the municipal budget. However, the modification to the homestead exemption and the elimination of municipal revenue sharing resulting in approximately $725,000 in lost revenue to the town of Scarborough will have a direct and deleterious effect on property taxpayers 
And whereas services are best provided at the level of government closest to the people, and municipalities are willing and able to provide essential services on behalf of the state, but we need financial support from the state to do so without having undue impact on property taxpayers, and whereas the budget proposal undercuts the historic partnership between state and local governments of sharing in the responsibility and cost of providing essential services, the cornerstone of this partnership being municipal revenue sharing, which is proposed for elimination, and whereas these proposed changes in state policy would shift a significant financial burden onto the municipality's tax revenue, which would result in an estimated $230 or 5% increase in property taxes for the average Scarborough household under 65 years of age, and whereas any cuts to the current level of municipal services would have a far-reaching and detrimental impact on essential municipal services, now, therefore, be it hereby resolved by the Town Council of the Town of Scarborough, in Town Council assembled, hereby urges the Maine State Legislature to craft a biennial budget compromise that recognizes and strengthens the partnership between state and local government, considers the already high property tax burden, seeks balance, progressivity, and a comprehensive approach with respect to tax policy, and identifies alternative cost savings and tax reforms that would prevent a significant increase in property taxes and protect essential municipal services from detrimental cuts. Now, therefore, be it further resolved that should some or all of the proposed tax shift take place, the Maine State Legislature should authorize legislation to enable municipalities to consider the adoption of a local option sales tax in an effort to move away from total reliance on the regressive property tax and consider a more progressive tax structure. Signed and sealed this 18th day of February 2015 on behalf of the Scarborough Town Council and the Town Manager of Scarborough, Maine, and if adopted, would be signed by Jessica Holbrook, Town Council Chair, and attested by Yolanda Justice, Town Clerk. So, pleasure of the Council. So moved. Second. And discussion. Uh, I know that uh, I was a driving force behind this. Uh, I feel we had an option of sending a couple of counselors up to speak you know, at the hearings, but they divided the hearings up. And sometimes one person's voice, it does count, trust me. But I feel very strongly that if we act together as a council to send the message not only to our local legislators, but to the legislature as a whole, and particularly the appropriations and finance committees uh, of the state legislature, that as a town we have concerns. And I think the way that uh, Manager Hall has worded this really outlines, you know, our concerns, but also offers some solutions um, that we should, I feel strongly that we should adopt this. Okay. Anybody else? Ed? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure whether we should be doing this. It mm -hmm. sounds too political to me, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, after sitting down with uh, our local legislatures uh, an hour ago, I feel pretty confident that they uh, they know exactly what we're going through and what our concerns are. And I don't know by passing this and sending this up to the state, what does it really mean? I'm not too terribly sure about this. Sure. That's how I feel. Sure. Nope, not at all. Um, if I might explain, and, and um, thank you for bringing that mm -hmm. to my attention. I, I should have explained that a little better. Um, certainly, we had our, our representatives here this evening, and, and that, is, that is greatly appreciated. Unfortunately, um, just like a council, they are one vote individually of many. 
Um, as Jean Marie mentioned, we, we, her and I had discussed maybe trying to, in, in tandem or in turns, to go up and testify as, as they were talking about the budget and, and, and having the hearings. Um, unfortunately, I, I do have to work once in a while. <laughs> just, just saying. Um, so that, that really wasn't um, an option. Of course, we had the council meeting tonight. Today is one of the meetings that they held. They're, they're having another one tomorrow. Um, what this does is rather than just to, um, which would be the effect of testifying, which is where we went this route instead, um, is having the audience of the entire legislature. So each of them will, will have a copy of this, as well as the House, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so as much as our, our local representatives understand it, we, we were hoping for that broader aspect of, so they all were clear of, of, of these are some concerns for, for us as a municipality. Um, and, and that's all essentially this does, is um, we are concerned about what you're doing, and, um, and my, 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 my personal spin on that was, as Jean Marie alluded to with the local option, is we're concerned about some of the things you're doing, and please give us some options. If you're going to go through with them, leave us with some options to try to, try to help mediate some of that impact. So, um, so that in a nutshell is what the resolution does. So, um, Again, I apologize and thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, is there any other questions? Yep. John? Thank you. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> the most important part of this resolution really is in the last therefore. And um, I agree with uh, Councillor Blay. Sometimes when we make these statements, we wonder what the true impact is, if there is any impact at all, and therefore why should we do them? But I think that given the current environment that we're trying to work in, uh, both at the local level, but even at the county level and then the municipal, um, the state level, um, making a statement such as this and as strong as it is, really is absolutely necessary. And by the way, so the last the last item that's really emphas emphasized here is allowing us to uh, maintain mm -hmm. that local control or the local authority of the option sales tax. Um, I will say I don't know whether or not I actually support having a local <laughs> option sales tax, and I hope that I by me voting in favor of the resolution, no one suggests that um, later if we get into the mm -hmm. debate if that does come to it, because uh, I think I need to see way more data, but it is about local control and about local authority, and I think that it's, uh, I think it was council, uh, <laughs> it was Manager Hall who said in the last session something about that um, someone made a statement, um, something, you know, the, uh, the best control is the one that's lo uh, closest to the local people, mm -hmm. and um, we are that political local control for them, and I think that uh, this is a well stated, and I do th want to thank the manager as well as others who crafted this, um, and I will support it. Anybody else? No? All right, back to me. Um, so again, um, just to reiterate, I'm, uh, I do thank Jean Marie for uh, for all her work, and uh, I do thank Tom for for all her work on on the resolution and and my two cents that I added to it. Um, I do just kind of piggyback on what Sean said, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. I, I, I certainly wouldn't sit here and today and say I 100% right. support sales option, but I, I think it's important to preserve options. So, <coughs> um, that being said, all those in favor? And that is unanimous. There is no old business at this time, so we're going to move on to new business, which is Order 15-013, first reading and schedule a public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to Chapter 1002, the Town of Scarborough Shellfish Conservation Ordinance pertaining to conservation time. And before we jump off to comment, if you would like to just talk to us a little bit about that, Tom. Yes. Um, about three weeks ago, I was, I was made aware of an issue that has been brought forward and affects a number of main uh, municipalities. This issue really came from the Federal Department of Labor, who have made issue with the fact uh, many communities like Scarborough, coastal communities who have, that have a shellfish conservation ordinance uh, have a conservation requirement as part of that uh, licensure process. Uh, that conservation requirement is actually promulgated or, or, or ruled to us through the Department of Marine Resources. The issue that's come forward is that uh, that technically, at least in the eyes of the federal DOL, is compensable time, that we cannot require time without providing compensation. Uh, it sounds quite outlandish, frankly, and I think it's an overreach in my <coughs> opinion, but nonetheless, there's clear guidance in this regard, and so 
Uh, we did consult with legal counsel as to how to rectify those requirements. And I must profess, uh, what's before you is, I think, only half of the answer. Uh, the, the issue is really twofold. One, because we uh, allow licenses for students, those under 18, uh, there's actually a child labor component, and that's what's addressed here, because it removes the conservation requirement for those under 18. What it doesn't sufficiently do, I, I don't believe now, um, having thought about it further, to sufficiently deal with the conservation requirement for other license holders. So I mention that because I think there are a number of options the council could take. Uh, you could table this simply to your next meeting to allow me time to work with legal counsel to uh, come up with the additional amendments. Or you could take action uh, in first reading. This is uh, appropriate and I would strongly recommend this piece in and of itself. Uh, with the knowledge that at a future meeting uh, you'll be asked to consider further amendments to this ordinance. And I guess the final piece I just want to share with you, a April 1st is the annual date for license renewal. So it, perhaps in my haste to get this before you this evening, uh, our goal was to finalize these changes before we do license renewal. Uh, that I think may still be possible if we're able to introduce the full package of amendment at your March first March meeting and take action at your second. So uh, I apologize for bringing it forward perhaps uh, halfway complete. Um, and Cody and I are certainly available to help you answer questions regarding the procedure and the best way to proceed. So uh, before we get any further, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item? Uh, coming back to the council, pleasure of the council. Mm -hmm. Second. And discussion. Sean. Yeah, uh, through the chair to the manager. Um, resident and non-resident student commercial license holders under the age of 18 are not required for conservation time. Is that statutorily limited or can we impose, I mean conservation um, at an early age, teaching conservation at an early age seems beneficial. Um, and so why would we not encourage some form of conservation training or participation for young men and women under the age of 18. The strongest position we could take is in the parentheses. It says voluntary particip participation is encouraged. We yeah. cannot require it for we those cannot. under 18 okay. because mm -hmm. of the child labor laws. For those over 18 is not yet addressed and that's a piece I need to do okay. more work on. Uh, but uh, I don't believe there's any latitude in that regard. So we, the strongest position we chose to take was a, was a, a, a a voluntary encouragement or encouragement of voluntary service. Mm -hmm. right. And if I'm not mistaken, um, I, I guess I should say, unfortunately, Peter's not here this evening. He is our shellfish conservation liaison. Um, this first leg of waiving for under 18, if I'm not mistaken, did pass at the Conservation it Commission. Mm -hmm. it did. Um, so it did come with as, as a recommendation for them. Um, so just some, some background on that, sorry. Yeah, it, it just a final observation in terms of procedure, it strikes me that the additional amendment that I need to bring forward is likely to be substantive, such that even if you take action tonight in first reading, and then you try to amend this additional piece in, it may well be so substantial that you start back over. Okay. Mm. Uh, that's really a decision you all have to make, but um, it strikes me that it's likely to be substantive enough that it should go back. All right, any anybody else? All right, here's my two cents. Um, I, I, I plan on supporting to, to waive the hours for under 18. Certainly there's child labor laws. Um, I wouldn't want us to be in a position of, which is where this aro arises from, um, in another community somewhere else, it was contested, if I'm not there. I did attend that meeting um, in, in Peter's absence. It was a newspaper article that, that wrote about it. Um, it, that it has come about in, in another community. So at the very least, pass this, and then we know we're, we're covered at least for this for the segment. Um, and certainly for, for the other half, um, I'm sure Tom will work diligently yeah. with human resource and legal and as well with the uh, shellfish conservation. That is a tongue twister. I'm sorry. <laughs> with the shellfish conservation commission um, to, to have a package for, right. for anything else. So. Um, with that being said, all those in favor, and that's unanimous. Thank you. Next item is order number 15-014, act on the request to appoint Ms. Susan Russo 
Assistant Assessor as the Internum Town Assessor to take effect upon the departure of Mr. William Healy and to end upon the Town Council's appointment of a successor and to appoint Mr. William Healy as a Special Deputy Assessor for purposes of overseeing, attending to, and representing the Town of Scarborough in current tax abatement proceedings and to authorize the Town Manager manager to enter into a letter of agreement for compensation in terms of service provided by Mr. Healy. Um, if you wouldn't mind maybe just sure. discussing that um, The town must have someone duly appointed by the town council uh, in the position of tax assessor and with the uh, resignation of Mr. Healy going on to other employment, uh, Sue Russo is eminently qualified. She holds the proper licensure and credentials uh, to serve in that capacity and in fact did that the last time we had a vacancy. So I highly recommend uh, she's very capable of um, filling those roles and responsibilities in the interim. And then in the, uh, in the event, we do have ongoing matters uh, related to the uh, tax bills currently in Superior Court. Uh, actually, if you don't mind, I'd like to mention good news that Yay. we did hear about 4.30 this afternoon that we did prevail on both cases oh, nice. uh, at the mm. Superior Court. Um, I will send that out to you. I just didn't have time to do it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Justice Horton uh, prevailed, or we prevailed in both cases, um, and it remains to be seen whether it goes further. There certainly have been suggestions from the appellants that they plan to, and they have 21 days to decide that fact. So, back to the, res uh, the order in front of you. Uh, to the extent these matters uh, continue through the courts, uh, we may well need the services of Mr. Healy given his experience and involvement in these cases. And I would simply negotiate an hourly rate for his services should they be required. And if, um, if I might just add, we did do, correct me if I'm wrong, a similar process with um, our former correct. assessor uh, as we went through some of those yeah. court cases. Correct. So, um, is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this item? And seeing <laughs> none, closure of the council. More approval. Second. Okay. And any discussion? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. And the next item is order number 15-015. And I need to be do this. <laughs> Move to authorize the town manager to sign the necessary paperwork to sell property located at 75 Broad Turn Road to Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland. Upon review of the town attorney and as authorized by the town council on February 19, 2014, and reflected in the 2014 amended and restated purchase option agreement, including authorization for the town manager to execute and deliver all documents necessary for the transfer of the property described in the agreement, including without limitation a deed to approximately 5.5 acres of land on Broad Turn Road including without limitation a deed to him Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland, Inc., and to take delivery of a note and third position mortgage on the property securing the obligation of Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland, Inc., to develop affordable housing on the property as contemplated by the agreement. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak about that? And being none, pleasure of the council. Move approval. Second. Second. And is there any discussion? Yes. I, I just question. Um, so, who's in first and second position? There's two lenders, and despite our best efforts, uh, we're not able to take priority position above. No, nope, I, I just wanted to. I, I believe it's Gorham Savings and Genesis okay. Fund. I didn't. Yeah. Um, you don't see third position too often. Sorry. No. <laughs> Is it inappropriate to cheer? <laughs> um, no, I just think it's I think it's a great it's a wonderful thing. I mean this yeah. has been going on for quite a while. It, it was going on even before my before I started on the council it was something that I know I had talked to Jess about when I first mm -hmm. came on the council. Um, I'm desperate for um, housing, affordable housing in this town. It's something I feel strongly about and I know that my fellow councilors do. I think this is a great, huge, amazing thing. And I know it's only one home, but I think it's a start of something that's, it's, it's, that's Actually, one family. Thir thir right. <laughs> my, my bad. New home. Right. 13. But think of like the ripple effect of what that could cause. And that's 13 families that would not normally be able to be in this town. Um, and it just, it gives me goosebumps. And I'm, I'm really proud and um, kudos to Jessica and Tom 
um, for and some of our past counselors for working so hard on this. And I know they had days where they were banging their heads, I'm sure. Mm. Um, but I just really major kudos to both of you for yeah. seeing this through and making it happen. Mm -hmm. I just want to say ditto to um, uh, Councillor St. Clair's comments. I've been following this for a long time, but even before I was on the council and as a professional working in real, in real estate matters, I mean, I know you can't afford to live in Scarborough, a lot of uh, working people. So I think this is fabulous, and I'm thank you for all the work that was done. All right, and so if that's it, it's uh, over to me. Um, I'm very happy and excited. This, this has been a long road, and, and certainly um, um, without Mom's help um, and, and, and the Housing Alliance that mm -hmm. has you know, really worked quite a long time on trying to bring this project together. Um, just to the, um, in case it, I know Sean touched based on it, um, a third position mortgage, just, just so folks know, um, because it was town funds that, that bought this property. Um, it was brought with the caveat, bought with the caveat that 75% of the property was to be conservation and the remainder could be used for affordable housing. Um, so to protect the investment that the community made, there is a, what they call, I think they call that the silent, yes, well, we're technically yeah. silent third, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but it preserves our interest in that and, and it does have an overtime forgiveness to it, but, but it's you, so that it can't be flipped is what that comes down to. So um, with that, I'm happy to support it. And so all those in favor, and that is unanimous. All right, item, nine, nine, item number nine is standing in special committee reports and liaison reports. And we'll start with you, Sean. Um, absolutely. Uh, the SEDCO Board of Directors meeting for tomorrow has been canceled. The next meeting is actually scheduled for March 19th. Uh, finance uh, next week is going to be a busy week. On Monday the 23rd, the Joint uh, Town Council and School Board Finance uh, Workshop or Committee will be uh, meeting um, to move its agenda forward. And then on the 25th is our regular Finance Committee meeting, just the Town Council. Um, I'm trying to remember, is this going to be County Commissioner, Tom? No, that's no. March. No. Uh, Solid waste? No, that's March. March. I, think <laughs> I believe it's I think the county commissioner. Our county commissioner and county manager will be at that meeting. I uh, did also want to mention Eco Maine um, next, um, not next week, uh, the week after. March 3rd is the Eco Excellence Awards uh, presentation at 11.30 at Eco Maine. So if you're interested in attending, we are all welcome to attend. And that's my reports. Tim Murray? Um, I'd like to report on the Conservation Commission. Um, during our meeting, one of the things we're working on is we're looking at an inventory of conservation properties within Scarborough to see if we can make sure we have some so-called conservation corridors. And the primary one we're looking at is along the Nonsuch River. And it's really interesting to see that most of it actually has been conserved. So the next step is, you know, how can we utilize it as a town, you know, walking trails, whatever, at, at some point. Um, Jay Chase had a very interesting map that I forgot to pick up a copy of. No, I'm reading this, but I will get it. Um, and we're going to do some ongoing discussion there. Um, Susan Nixon is working with a so-called native landscaping workshop, in other words, plants that are native to Maine. And we're working on uh, pro possibly doing some co-hosting uh, with a garden club of a uh, workshop around permaculture, landscape design, et cetera. And it's planned tentatively for the third week in March at Piper Shores in the early afternoon. We are not meeting in March. The next meeting of the Conservation Commission will be Tuesday, second Tuesday in April. Sorry, I, couldn't, I lost my place. And my other very quick report, and I'm going to keep it very quick, is the Legislative Policy Committee of the Maine Municipal. I attended that a week ago. Uh, it's my understanding that a number of smaller towns uh, showed up to testify today against taking away municipal revenue sharing. Um, and you know my concerns with it, and I've given you the literature, and I did my spiel. So, uh, so we meet once a month. Uh, and just um, and then um, they get 
back to me or to Tom, and occasionally we get emails that I forward you guys. You may already get, and I apologize if you're getting two, just to do with what's what's up and the highlights. So we just have to keep an eye on what's going on uh, up there because you know I just don't want to see property taxes negatively impacted. So that's it for me. No? Okay. Um, uh, ordinance committee met yesterday. It was actually a really productive, good meeting. I felt like. Um, you can go back and review. I know we had some trouble with the video and stuff, but I do audio believe it, only. Yeah, we have audio only of that. Um, there has been some um, pretty significant parking issues in a couple areas of town, and we sort of hammered through some of those yesterday. We are um, putting together a very informal committee to deal with some parking issues down in Higgins Beach. So if you're interested in that, um, you can reach me through the town email, and I'll get you on that committee. Um, and as soon as, I'll probably by uh, the beginning of next week pick a time at night um, for a six o'clock meeting where we can all meet and put our heads together. We're going to be working with the Surf Riders Association, their, their group, um, to just try to help come up with some ways that um, we can maybe keep people from showing um, themselves when they're changing and things like that. Um, but it was actually a really good, productive meeting. The other thing I wanted to mention that goes along with that, um, well, I should, should I do next door? My, uh, go ahead. So uh, yeah. one thing that we're, another thing that we're working on is um, finally getting a, a town Facebook page. <laughs> to some people that might not seem like a real big deal, but in actuality, yeah. it's there's yeah. a lot that goes into it when you're a municipality and you yeah. want to produce yeah. something like a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we're working on that and it's going to be up and running soon and we're hoping that we're going to be able to combine some of the town, um, some of the other town resources, other groups like community services, and um, we're going to be able to combine them all so that people can get their information <coughs> from one source. Um, and the one thing I want to talk to people about and really stress is there's a website out there called nextdoor.com, um, and I encourage you to go there and check that out and sign up for it. It's an amazing tool um, that would be great if we could get people in Scarborough using it. Um, it literally connects you with your neighbors. And one of the really great things that we can do is, if there is an emergency in your neighborhood, um, if you are signed up through Nextdoor, you can get a text alert or an email alert letting you know that there's something happening in your area. Um, a very quick example of that was a busing situation. There was trouble where they couldn't get kids to a certain neighborhood. They used next door and they were able to reach some of those parents that otherwise they wouldn't have been able to reach by a text message. So it's kind of a really very interesting thing. So I encourage you, nextdoor.com, um, to look that up. And then I also have to push the Project Grace, the clink bags. I know we had a couple of them out tonight. Please, please, please help your neighbors out with that. Um, it's a very easy thing to do. Our next ordinance meeting is March 17th um, at 9.30 a.m. Done. <laughs> and Ed. Um, I attended the uh, Enig board meeting last night. Amazingly enough, there was only one item on there. Wow. <coughs> but a very, very interesting item. There's a uh, proposal of uh, Warbrook Farm on the corner of Black Point Road and Sperling Road mm -hmm. to add a ice cream. Ooh. Oh, that'd be cool. There's a lot of excitement. Yes. I'm <laughs> bored about that. Yes. So I'm sure that you'll see the approvals of that go running through. <laughs> 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 All right. And um, just, well, I have my notes. Um, tomorrow, I was mistaken earlier in the month when I said that Housing Alliance was going to meet. Um, I had the date wrong, so I was wrong. Um, they will be meeting tomorrow, which will be February 19th, which is a Thursday at 6.30, and um, I'm sure they are, well, it says the habitat update, so I think we might have let the cat out of the bag You're a right. little there, but um, so they'll be, I'm sure, excited about the good news. Um, one of the, the other things, um, and they won't be talking specifics, but they were talking about outreach efforts and, and, and um, some discussion about community outreach and, and working groups and, and those sorts of things. Um, another kind of side note um, that I'm, I'm hoping that they tackle this year is um, 
in amongst some of my own personal things this year, I realized the need for um, the veterans and, and some mm -hmm. of their, their, you know, the the, the, the bedrooms and the units are, are hard to come by um, for the veterans' homes and, and, and those types of services. So um, hopefully we'll be looking at just kind of um, proactively, you know, what type of zoning do we have around there? Is it conducive if they ever need to expand? And, you know, um, the baby boomers are coming, and that's going to be your, you know, your Vietnam folks. And, and again, you know, we've got a lot mm -hmm. more that will be in need of those already short supply of services. So, um, so they'll hopefully be exploring some of those items over the next couple of months. Um, the next meeting for Historic Preservation Committee will be Tuesday, March 3rd at 6.30. They are currently working on a um, report for the council with a series of recommendations and um, probably sunsetting as an ad hoc committee and, and asking for, um, likely to request asking um, a very low level um, standing committee that, that just on the upfront for the first year or so um, if we accept the report. Um, a few target working group specific tasks of, of some items that, that m might um, be of interest to us and then from there on would have a s annual meeting so they could take nominations um, and, or deletions from, from our list that we did um, adopt in first reading. Um, so that they're working on working on that report. And that's it for liaison reports. So the next one is you, Tom. Oh, good. Oh, Can I ask sorry. a question sure. uh, before the manager's sure. report? Um, status of rules and policy committee and their work on tax acquired or tax foreclosed property. Uh, where do we stand with that rule and have they met? Are they working? They did them? meet. Uh, they had a very productive meeting and sent me with very clear direction. They'd like a specific uh, change to the policy that okay. I'm working on with legal counsel that would allow, I'll call it a redemption period. So for those properties that aren't primary residents, which are already provided for in the, pro in the policy, it would allow some limited period of time, perhaps 90 days after the occurrence, and maybe 90 days after this passage of the update, uh, for us to work with prior owners to see if they want to re reacquire. So it's, uh, I think, a real effective tool at dealing with clearing out the backlog. I so think we expect something. to receive something as a council soon? Yes, I would okay. say certainly in, in March you'll be getting right. policy revision. Thank you. And so now you can have oh, town manager okay. report. <laughs> um, with the passage uh, of the uh, order, uh, I'm fully authorized, although I think I had all the other authorization I needed to sign the documents for the Habitat Project, but as Jessica was reading it and taking gas for breath, you could tell a lawyer wrote it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was just to make sh absolutely sure that this council will uh, authorize the sale of the property. Um, closing is scheduled for a day next week. They're, they're still fine-tuning the exact date, so I will attend and, and do that on behalf of the town. I did want to report, though, Habitat uh, themselves have not rested. Uh, in fact, they've scheduled over the next uh, three months um, 12 different, uh, I don't know if you call it recruitment, but there, there are opportunities for folks interested in home ownership uh, to attend and learn more about the program. And uh, they're kind of interspersed between uh, locally here at the library and also at the Habitat offices. So I'll make sure I put this notice up on the town website. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've also sent it to all town and school employees, really just looking to get folks aware of this and ideally attending some of these to understand if this might be a good match for them. Mm -hmm. So really excited that we're obviously moving forward. Uh, also, by way of announcement, uh, the Land Trust is holding two, they call them community conversations, uh, the first of which is on Tuesday, February 24th, and the second is Thursday, March 5th. Both are at the Wentworth Cafeteria at 7. And this is really just to get feedback from the community regarding Benjamin Farm. Um, so I, I applaud their effort to get some input before they start uh, making big plans. And again, I think they're doing their own PR about that, but I think it's a great opportunity for us to get engaged. And lastly, by way of notice, uh, the school department will be doing their third annual community dialogue. Hmm. This is scheduled for April 30th at 4 p.m. or 30 p.m. at the Wentworth cap Cafeteria. I've had the occasion to attend the prior two, and if you can spare the two or three hours, it's, it's a very interesting and quite enlightening process. So if there's a way you can get there, I strongly encourage it. Um, I came away with a much better feeling. Yeah. And lastly, I just want to report on a question raised by Councilor Babine. Um, I don't have the answer from legal yet, but I wanted to report regarding the Wentworth School Construction Project. 
we've uh, scoured the finances and have identified that a total of uh, just under three hundred thousand two hundred ninety nine uh, and seventy-five dollars are uh, remain unspent but bonded. So that is the sum that um, I was referring to. And three point two nine two seven seven nine funds were not bonded and will never be bonded. So we've asked two questions of legal counsel as to what can we do with the amount that's unspent but bonded, and what, if anything, has to do with those monies approved by voters but not necessary. And I expect at your next meeting I'll have that answer. Thank you. That's a little chunk to pay on the debt. Just sad. <laughs> well, I'm quite sure that will be your recommendation. The cleanest thing is to, is to put it directly on debt servers. Yep. There's no question. Yep. I, get, well, I could constitute that in the next item with council member comments, so I could say that was my comment, but um, <laughs> we'll, we'll start on the other end, Ed. <laughs> um, I just want to say that I thought the workshop tonight was outstanding. Yeah. It was good to see our legislators as much in the dark as we are. Mm -hmm. um, but they, I think they all have a have an agenda. They're all working towards it. Uh, and I'm pretty confident that they're going to come out with something. Unfortunately, we're at the tail end of everything. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big things that we might have to do in the future is figure out when we have these budget years, how do we create a budget when we don't know what the revenue is going to be like? <laughs> sure. Should we stop taking it? Okay. <laughs> it's an idea. It's an idea. But anyway, I thought tonight was really good. Yeah. Great. Um, I agree with Ed. I thought it was really good. I think it almost sort of keeps them even more accountable than normal um, when we bring them into this sort of situation. Um, I know it was good for me to learn. I actually learned a couple things that I didn't know. Um, so I wanted to briefly just touch base on. Um, and I know I talked about this earlier, but I want to talk about it one more time quickly, is the fact that um, we are working on some PR stuff. Um, Tom and Jessica have been really good with working with me on um, trying to sort of open us up a little bit more, um, have us be more transparent. I know everyone's getting tired of hearing me say that word. Um, and um, really trying to get out into the neighborhoods a little bit more. And so I have some ideas that I'm tossing around with them as to how we get into the neighborhoods more, how we get to talk to the people more. Um, and so hopefully over the next month or so, we'll start being able to roll some of those ideas out. Um, and some of them are going to be trial and error. We'll see if they work. If they work, wonderful. If they don't, we go back to the drawing board and we look for something else. Um, I think that we have, again, an amazing town and people want to be involved in this town. And it's just a matter of reaching those people and getting in front of them. And so I think we have the way to do it. Now we just have to build it. And we are doing that. So it's very exciting. It's an exciting time. I know. You guys, they like to no, make fun of me. No, um, but I do. I I'm get, actually making fun of me. I get excited um, about it. I think it's, I think it's, we need to be there. We need to be um, caught up with the other, with everybody else. We need to be, this is a world of technology and we should be using it. Um, and, I think there are ways that we can be doing that and to our benefit and also to the people that we serve, to their benefit. Um, so it's, a, it's exciting. Um, and again, nextdoor.com, please, I encourage you to, to look into it and sign up for it. It's very private. Um, it's much more private than Facebook. Um, and uh, that's it. I'm done. Sorry. Jim Marie. Yeah. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank our legislative delegation. I do think we had a productive evening tonight, uh, and I know that it's hard, you know, for them to be at hearings and whatever during the day and then uh, be down here, but I certainly appreciate that, and I look forward to meeting with them again because I do think it helps, and as Councillor St. Clair pointed out, you know, it's a little more accountability uh, for them so they get to hear because if you notice, they, they – some, they didn't understand that there were some issues with some things because they aren't as close to it as we are. So, um, also, I want to thank Public Works and Public Safety for everything they're doing with this darn snow. I wish it would stop. Spring hopefully will come. Uh, and I'd really like to thank members of the public who shovel hydrants 
and I encourage anyone, if you live near a hydrant, please adopt it and shovel it. Um, it's hard for the fire department to go around and shovel, I don't know how, how many hydrants we have around town, but if there were ever a fire and a hydrant weren't unshoveled, it takes a while to shovel those things, particularly in the steep snow, and that could be very dangerous. Um, and just last, I just want to, again, you know, encourage members of the public to stay tuned to what goes on in Augusta. As Councilor Blaze pointed out, we're at the tail end of a lot of things. Um, and all of us, I don't think there's one counselor sitting here who wants to see us raising property taxes. I know there's some people out there who don't believe that, but our goal is to try to keep property taxes as stable as possible. Uh, and there are outside factors that we have a bit of influence with. And as citizens, you shouldn't be just, I mean, I want you to contact me, but you should also be contacting the members of our legislative delegation with concerns. That's it for me. Sir. Um, I have nothing tonight. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'll take it. Last year, no coming back to it. Um, so I will just say, yeah, Jim, I'm just going to say ditto to everybody else. I think you raped on him too much. <laughs> I feel bad now. Sorry, he's saving, his, he's saving it okay. for the next one. He'll talk for 20 minutes for the next meeting. Yeah. Um, I would just like to say ditto and, and just reflect again, you know, thank you to all of, you know, the Public Works guys who are going to be, and their families, who probably haven't seen them in three weeks at this point, and you know, public safety, and, and again, just, you know, ditto to everything said else um, this evening and that's going to be it for my public comments and um, item number 12 is adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. All those. Okay. As unanimous. Almost.